Hello and welcome to Young Adults and Youth Sunday School. This is lesson number four, and the topic is Kadash. Kadash. Kadash is a Hebrew word, and we're going to look at the meaning, and that's going to lead us into our lesson. Actually, we're going to be talking about sanctification, how to be sanctified. So Sunday School lesson number four, Kadash. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this privilege to come and learn. Holy Spirit, divine teacher, us, O Lord, help us, O Lord, and sanctify our spirit, soul, and body for your use. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Kadash, this is lesson number four in this 2023-2024 year. Our passage, Bible reading, is taken from John 17. We'll be reading verses 17 to 19. John 17, 17 to 19, and it says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So from that passage, the word of God is the truth and is the truth that sanctifies us. Jesus sanctified himself. And because we know the truth, the truth makes us free. The truth also sanctifies us. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, and it says, To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and yours. In the New Living Translation, the same passage, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2 says, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Jesus Christ, just as he did for all those people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So the church of God is sanctified, has been sanctified by Christ Jesus. And those of us who call on the name of Jesus Christ, acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. By way of introduction, Kadash is a Hebrew word, and when translated, it means sanctified. So to be sanctified means to be set apart for a special use, like a special dress for a special occasion. That's stretching it. That's a very general term. It is when you talk about setting something apart for very, very special use. It's not common everyday use. It's something special for the very, very best of occasions. Similar words to sanctify includes holy, consecrated, separated, and hallowed. When we read our memory verse, you'll notice that in the King James Version, where it said sanctified, in the New Living Translation, it talks about being holy. So being holy, being set apart, being consecrated, being separated, being hallowed, you know, prepared, treated specially. Those are similar words to being sanctified. In the Old Testament, Sanctification was part of a ceremonial or ritual uh, consecration of anything or person to God. So to consecrate the, 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 the temple or the altar or to consecrate Aaron and his sons and their, their, their vesture, there was a process of sanctification involved. The Hebrew people, the Hebrews as a people, they were holy unto the Lord. They had been set apart because God chose them. He separated them for his own special people. And he made a covenant with them. And that covenant included some atoning rites and sacrifices. In Exodus 31 verse 13, God says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So the 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 process or the fact that the Hebrews were sanctified means in the Old Testament they had to follow certain rites and carry out certain atoning uh, sacrifices, guilt offering, sin offering, you know, consecration, uh, being a, a Nazarite, there were certain rites they had to follow. And there was something holy about the Sabbath. The Sabbath had to be hallowed, had to be separated. If you read the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, you will see the things that God expects of people who are sanctified, who are set apart for his own use. Now, in the New Testament, when we talk about sanctification, we're talking about the work of grace. It's the second work of grace after salvation. 
By grace, we have been saved through faith. Once we are saved, we are sanctified. And as we'll learn later in this lesson, sanctification is actually a gradual, lifelong process. Sanctification in the context of the New Testament is a gradual, lifelong process. It's the work of grace, the grace of God that achieves it after we have been saved. Every believer is called to a holy, sanctified life. Life, a holy consecrated life that's holy consecrated, dedicated, separated unto God. Today's lesson, Kadash, is uh, divided into two outlines. The first one talks about sanctification, the concept and the process. What's the concept of sanctification and what is the process of sanctification? And then the second life, uh, second outline, we'll be talking about these practices of a sanctified life. In other words, how does a sanctified life look like? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we'll go to the first outline, sanctification, concepts, and process. What are the concepts of sanctification and what is the process to get sanctified? So the first one, like we said, in a definition, to sanctify means to make holy or to set apart for God. To make holy or set apart for God. Exodus 29 verse 44 says, So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate both Aaron and his sons to minister to me as priests. So they were set apart, the altar, Aaron, his garments, his sons were set apart, sanctified, consecrated for holy use by God. Another concept of sanctification is making something truly perfect. Something that has been defiled, something that is sinful, that is to renew, to sanctify, to make it whole, to make it new again. Colossians 2.13 says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made you alive together with him, having forgiven all your trans trespasses. So what was defiled, what was sinful, God can sanctify through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. So sanctification makes perfect, makes true that which was previously defiled, that was what was previously unacceptable. Another concept of sanctification is that it is a progressive work of divine grace. Remember we said sanctification is a work of grace. It's the second work of grace after salvation. By grace you've been saved and it's by grace that you're sanctified. But it is progressive. It's progress, progressive work of God upon the soul that, and it justifies by the love of Christ. It's justified by the love of Christ. Romans 3.24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we are, I don't want to use the word qualified, but we are justified, we are accepted, we are uh, admitted into sanctification through the redemptive work that Jesus Christ has done. Another concept is that Sanctification is the advanced work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. It starts right from the day of salvation until the day we are perfected when we resurrect with Jesus Christ. It's, you, you can't complete sanctification in this life. It's ongoing, it's continuous, and it progresses until the day we are called unto glory. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11 says, And such were some of you, for you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of Lord Jesus, by the Spirit of our God. So it's an advanced work of the Holy Spirit after salvation, and it starts in the, day, in the life of a believer from the day of salvation, and it continues throughout until he sees God in glory. So talking about the concept of sanctification, sanctification is a gradual cleansing from the corrupt nature to a spotless nature. We are being perfected. Our minds are being renewed on a daily basis. We are being cleansed. We are shedding off the old man, old habits, old things that are that are that defiled us. Those are being cleansed and they're being shed from us. And it continues. It's gradual and it continues. John 15, verse 3 says, You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remember, sanctify them by their word. That word is true. The word of God is what sanctifies us, it's what cleans us. In Jude 1, 24, Jude has only one chapter. Jude chapter 24, verse 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. It's only God who can keep us 
from stumbling and present us faultless. We only become faultless and perfect at that final day. But the cleansing goes on throughout our lifestyle when we walk steadily with the Lord. Every Christian should be holy as God is holy. That is the ultimate goal. Our God is holy, so we should be holy. So that work of sanctification needs to go on. Because by the time we see him face to face, we shall be just as he is. First Peter 1, 15 to 16. First Peter 1, 15 to 16 says, But as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Remember when we in our introduction we said there are words that are you know, similar to sanctification. Holiness is one of them. Being separated, being consecrated, being hallowed, those are words that are similar to sanctification. The sixth concept of sanctification is that sanctification and truth go together. They cannot separate sanctification and truth. Again, sanctify them by their word. Their word is truth. Sanctification and truth must go together. If you live a life, you cannot believe a sanctified life. And you cannot be sanctified and still live in a life. You cannot be sanctified and still tell lies. So those who love to be sanctified must love the truth. The two must go together. They must love the truth, which is the word of God. John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is the truth, and the word of God is what sanctifies us. So we've looked at six concepts of sanctification. To make holy, to make truly perfect what was defiled and sinful. It's a progressive work of, of divine grace by the Holy Spirit. And it's the advanced work of the Holy Spirit in, say, from, in the life of a believer from the moment of salvation up until the day of, um, of redemption, up to the day of perfection when we see Christ in glory. His gradual cleansing will be cleansed and will be made perfect. We will be made holy because our God is holy and that sanctification and truth are inseparable. They go hand in hand. And John 17, 17 confirms that sanctify them by your truth your word is truth. So what is the process of sanctification? It is the Holy Spirit who does the work of sanctification. And he does it in various ways. Number one, through the word of God. We keep going back, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. We, the Holy Spirit does the work of sanctification through God's word. Second Thessalonians 2.13 says, For you are, we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren. Beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. And what is the truth? The word of God. So the Holy Spirit does the work of sanctification through God's word. He also does that work through the blood of Jesus. First John 1 John 1.7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us for more sin. Remember, we're talking about the, uh, the, 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 the concept of sanctification. We talked about cleansing. So the blood of Jesus does the cleansing. And another uh, way the Holy Spirit sanctifies us is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is important. It's an important ingredient in the work of salvation, of, of sanctification. So the process is through God's word, through the blood of God, and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So for us to be truly crucified with Christ, we have to believe in him. We have to have faith in him because he died for us out of love and he rose again to give us eternal life. So we've talked about the concept and the process of sanctification. The process is through God's word, through the blood of Jesus, and through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll now move on to the second outline, which talks about the practices of a sanctified life. How do you recognize a sanctified life? So what are the notable practices that you see in a sanctified life? A sanctified person, a believer who is living a sanctified life, lives holy. Leviticus 11.44 says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
Notice those words, consecrate, holy. Those are words that are usually associated with sanctification. So you shall therefore consecrate yourself, set yourselves apart. You shall be holy because God is holy. And you shall not defile yourself with any creeping things or anything that keeps on the earth. Another notable practice of a sanctified life is that they are bonded to Christ. They are inseparable from, from, from Christ. They don't live double lives. They are totally, permanently connected to Christ. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing, absolutely nothing. No difficulty, no challenge separates them from Christ because they are bonded, permanently linked and inseparable from Christ. Next, notable practices of a sanctified life. Such people walk straight and are transparent in their dealings. There's no, you know, go shadow of turning in them. When they say yes, it's yes. When they say no, it's no. There's no gray. Psalm 15 verse 2 says, He who walks uprightly and walks righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Sanctification and truth are inseparable. Remember we talked about that in the concept. Sanctification and truth are inseparable. And the person who lives a sanctified life must be truthful and transparent in all his or her dealings. The fourth practice, notable practice of a sanctified life, is that they live by the standard of God's word. God's word is their, uh, their, their, their compass. They live by the standard of God's word, not by the standard of man, not by the standard of their boss, not by the standard of society. They live by the standard of God's word and God's word only. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, I live by your word that is in my heart, that is guiding me, that's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. They live by the standard of God's word, not by any other standard. Other notable practices, number five, they have direct access to God. Isn't that wonderful? A sanctified life, someone who is living a sanctified life has a direct access to God. Psalm 15 verse 1 says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? And if you read further, it says, he who lives holy. I think we read that earlier. He who walks uprightly and walks righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Those are the people who have access to God, who can dwell in his tabernacle. Do you want to see God? Do you want to dwell in his, in his presence? Live holy, live a sanctified life, live a consecrated life. Number six, uh, practice of a sanctified life, is that the sanctified person who lives a sanctified life is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bubbles up through him. That out of the belly shall flow streams of living water. The Holy Spirit flows out of that person. Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. If anything is bubbling out of you, let it be the Spirit of God that is bubbling out of you okay and um two more practices of a sanctified life they have overflowing joy they have joy at all times joy overflows from them psalm 64 verse 10 says the righteous shall be glad in the lord and trust in him and all the upright in heart shall glory they shall have gladness joy that is from within and number eight Right, they, those who live a sanctified life, those who whose lives are sanctified, are peaceful. They have peace. First Peter three eleven. First Peter three eleven says, "Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it." Hebrews twelve verse fourteen says, "Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord." So those who live a sanctified life are. Peaceful. So notable practices that we've talked about of people who live a sanctified life, they live holy, they are bonded, they are, they are glued to Jesus Christ, they walk straight, they are transparent, they are truthful in all their dealings, they live only by the standard of God's word, they have direct access to God, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are full of joy, overflowing joy, and they have peace, they are full of peace. I hope this lesson has taught us a little bit about Kadash, which is being sanctified. 
And I believe and I pray that all of us, we want to live sanctified life. So in summary, what are we saying? Why is sanctification necessary? God's eyes are too pure to behold evil. That's why we need to be cleansed from everything that has defiled. Habakkuk 1.13, the A part, the first part of the Habakkuk 1.13, it says, you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look at wickedness. So if you want to see God, if you want to dwell in his tabernacle, we have to be sanctified. We also learned that without holiness, no one will see God. Hebrews 12, 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see God. Do you desire to see God? Then you need to live a sanctified life. Believers, all of us must live a sanctified life so that we can have continuous fellowship with God, both here on earth and in eternity. So we enjoin all of us to live holy and be sanctified today. And God will grant us the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this lesson. We pray that you will give us the grace to live sanctified life, to live holy, O oh Lord, to live in truth and righteousness, to have joy bubbling through us, to have peace all around us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us not dwell on things that are evil. Let our hearts abhor what is evil. Let our hearts delight in your word and your truth, O oh Lord, because we know that it's your word, the truth in your word that will keep us sanctified. Thank you, Lord, because you know you have heard us. Thank you because we know you will help us to live sanctified lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shalom. Please feel free to share this video with your friends and colleagues. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Uh, click the notification bell so that you'll know every time that a new video is posted. God bless you. I welcome your comments and feedback. Bye-bye. God bless you.